you know, I've been out of sight, you know, now I'm back in sight with out of sight too. And uh, I, I've had a big year, you know, this is you know, part two of what I've done since then. But since that time, I was able to accomplish like quite a few big things. I was, you know, first of all, due to, you know, me having the, the people around me that I had, you know, you know, my close friend, she's like a sis from another Miss Jennifer Riley. Then my videography, my friend, Tony Pro Edwards, you know, all of the you know, support that I've had. You know, my significant other decor on uh, my friend Sapphire, you know, Tamir, Trouble, you know, we, you know, that's what I'm, I'm gonna get into that. The songs, we got all the accomplishments that I was able to, my, uh, that I was able to accomplish. And, I just want to let you let you guys in on my journey. You know, this is out of sight division. But first of all, you know, I'm proud to say that I did. Uh, I was okay, uh, able to create my own booth. You know, I had the support and help of. Uh, my significant other, like I said, Decor Monet, Dixon, uh, and also Jennifer Riley. I did a, throughout the streaming and all of the other intangible support, you know, the library going and uh, make, make sure I was getting my prints. Tony uh, Pro with all the moral support. Last year was the 50th ham day uh, of Lebanon. In fact, it was the last ham day up to the day. And I feel like I accomplished history. I was able to uh, have a successful boot. I sold over, I had over 50 paintings and I probably sold close to 30 of them. So I took him, uh, I took him to Club 68 one. And he said, who did this? And I was telling him, he said, and he's legally blind? I said, yes, he sure is. He said, if he did this, I said, yes. He said, think the talent, he, just think what he do. If, if, if his eyes were good. I remember as a kid, always wanting to escape the reality of this realm of life. And it was just, I was blessed to be given that gift of art, you know, because art is one thing that's, that's a thing that's not just like a, it's not just a, it's more than just like a, a class in school, it's a it's a way of life. When you lose one of your senses, it brings the others in the, in, in the more problems. I said that talent, he's got it whether he's blind or not. I said he did a hell of a job on them. I said they'll go so much paint down. I said they, I mean people were buying. I said if he had, I mean everything I saw was good. I thought they all looked good. Okay, I think you got a hell of a talent. But. See, Melvin had a booth set up at our country ham days in our hometown of Lebanon. And uh, I was like, man, I ain't seen Melvin in a while. I was like, I know we hadn't talked to some years, actually, because I moved to Elizabethtown. And uh, I seen this booth set up with all the paintings and everything. I was like, man, I'm going to have to go over here and see what he got. I mean, I've been watching him on Facebook Live. He was doing his thing. And for him to legally be blind, it kind of amazed me that he had so much artwork that he had like had laid out just for sale. So I had to go over and, and buy one, support the move, the calls, you know. And uh, I got home and I got to thinking, I was like, man, he really has a true talent. And that was a big accomplishment. So right off that, I went right back into the library and I set up, uh, I brought some more paintings. That was like two weeks later. And I was able to sell a couple of pieces there, like I think three pieces. And then this is like, sometime in the middle of October. I don't remember the exact date. And then uh, we, and then me, Tony Pro, Jennifer Riley all got together and we did something special for the city of Lebanon. And we, we had a streaming show. We created, a, we developed a streaming show together collectively called Leonardo Speaks, which was in Marion County Library here in Lebanon, Kentucky. I went in, I, I painted the original library of Lebanon, not necessarily the first library, but the original that we will remember in our memory and I did the most updated library. I painted that library. Then I painted uh, the two cities where I'm 
where I was, one city where I was born, the other city I was raised, which is Miami, Florida, Indianapolis, Indiana. And, and I uh, did a Christmas celebration with the kids, which I did a special painting of Ellen DeGeneres. And the reason why I did her, because I said she the closest uh, thing to Santa Claus is that we ever seen in real life. Hello, Ellen. Uh, my name is Melvin Donato James at the Marion County Public Library in Lebanon, Kentucky. And we all love you here. And we got a big, beautiful piece waiting for one of your uh, big, beautiful mansions. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, just Merry Christmas to you and just everything that you've done for the world, done for us, uh, everybody that's in this building, you touched us in some way, uh, even in my, the comfort of my living room. So we like to wish, wish you, excuse me, a very Merry Christmas from the Marion County Library out of Lebanon, Kentucky. So that, that was, and along the way, I was, uh, I'm also, I also produce music. And, you know, to kind of go back a little bit, uh, October, I put out the first, my first song that, my first successful song called Watermelon featuring Tamir, AKA Trouble. And that song surprisingly did good for a small county, for us not to have any backing. And we dropped that song out on YouTube and Facebook, like organic. And uh, Tony Pro, AKA, you know, the CEO, the founder, the creator of Taproot Media Group. He shot, directed, and he also chopped, cut, and put together the video, and it was a great dope video. It was like, producer, producer, got back together, like, you know, after that, all that time, it was like, hey, let's let's do more projects, let's work, you know? And I asked Melvin, I was like, how you feel about, you know, jumping on board with Section House Productions. No contracts, no nothing. Just people helping people and everything's even, everything's fair, like a team. And uh, that's pretty much what we did. So uh, the next song that they done, him and Tamir, was uh, Loose Booty. And uh, we had to figure it out. It was a lot setting up Loose Booty uh, with the help of Pro and everybody else that supported the whole cause. It, was a, it came out to be a very great success, close to 50,000 views right now, I think close to 45, uh, and still counting, done everything the right way. Uh, and then Melvin, he actually drew the covers of uh, Loose Booty, uh, that came out excellent. Uh, so we had that printed off and shrunk down and I was able to get my distribution going and yeah, like it was a hit. So I'm like, hey, now it's rolling. Like I told Melvin, I told Tamir, like it's rolling now. like. Like we gotta stay consistent. This is a painting from my Mello of my pops, Uncle Costa up and Tucker, three G's. I gave him a picture and he had it for me in like two days and cold with the paintbrush. Me and Mello go way back from uh Rice Court when he had the studio on Rice Court, you know, we used to put the tracks down or whatever. We thought we was gonna make it, this shit, but we still going. We still, we still going right now to this day. But um, I been into this painting all his life. He used to paint the booths. And shit. That was cold then. But yeah, man, I like this picture. Every time I walk past it, I salute it. Three G's, man. We went into the new year, you know, feeling good. I went to Indianapolis a couple of times. Me, Jim, me, Jennifer, the core, my boys. Melvin the Third, Malachi LeBron James. Yes, I said LeBron James. But Malachi LeBron James, we went to Indianapolis, visit my family, and that was good. I needed that. I like I like to watch him paint. It's, it's cool to watch how he paints so I can learn from it. him. Because he's an artist too, our oldest son. Well both of them like to draw. Uh he's a little bit older than um him, so he's got a little bit more experience. But yes, he's really good. At drawing, he's learned just about everything that he knows from his from his daddy. Ty, you want to say something? You like daddy's artwork, don't you? Yeah. You like watching daddy paint and stuff, don't you? Mm -hmm. Music. You like when daddy does his beats and everything. You like to rap. You tell them that you like to rap too. Mm -hmm. Huh? You like to get on the mic? Mm -hmm. I hadn't, up until that point, I hadn't seen my family for like. Well, I was about to say 10 years. I was gonna say 10 years because I actually seen him two years before that, but I said 10 years because my grandma had passed in uh, 2019 when I had last seen him. 
for this one. Man, man, you had a talent, and I'm so proud of you. You had a talent from little, and just looking at this and seeing, this, seeing what you do, what you do, you lost a sight, but you gained a sight, and you gained it through memories of black folks. And this, this is a talent that people were, can see better than you can't can't do. You know, and I miss your mom. I'm proud. I'm proud of you. I am. I'm proud of her. Oh, that's my baby. Hey, I'm proud. gonna tell you now. That's the oldest girl. And you're the oldest boy. I'm proud of my children. The, the first part of July, I was able to like rub elbows with another business, uh, another business person, a woman by the name of Laquisha, and she has her own clothing line called Lady Love. And this we're on pretty good. She offered me to, a job to do some artwork for her, and that was like that was another big accomplishment. And so, uh, you know, we we didn't actually meet yet. You know, we kind of, she was like, you know, she was already, she was getting up boutique and everything together. And just the beginning of July, she said, I'm gonna get back with you. So, you know what I'm saying? I was still doing what I was, had to do, grind and try to move, to try to continue uh, my, uh, my, my grind. And so, like, I didn't mention that I was working on a comic book throughout that whole process. It had started like back in November that time. Because what happened, like, you rewind back to November. And, like the time when I did the Hustle Man video, when I spoke on earlier. Uh, one day I was just laying in here and, and just sporadically, you know, my friend the Real Porter came in here and just threw a comic book at me and said, get to work. And I opened it up and like, the comic book, not a comic book, but a comic. The box is already laid out, but with no drawing in it. It was just ready for me to draw. So it was just, that was the sign. I was like, I can't look back now. So I started working on the comic book. And to fast forward, to fast forward up to the, uh, to where I left off at sometime in July, the beginning of July, because I wanted to get you updated to the comic book. I, at that point, I had did all of the artwork. I did the penciling, the inking, the, the, the paint. You know, I did it like I was explaining there, but I wanted to do it organically because I could have done it off the computer, but I wanted to show as being a legally blind artist, a legally blind artist, I wanted to be organic about it. And I, you know, I you know, I always taught my kids to always, you know what I'm saying, don't always try to take the cheap, easy way out, you know, because doing it the, the grinding harder way, you know, or not, you know, it'll make you better when you do get the easy access when, it, when it's necessary. You know, due to due to the uh, due to the fact that I am legally blind with a disease called Levers. You know, I'm not gonna lie, I'll be honest, at first I felt sorry for myself. I was ashamed to come out the house, cried every day, whimpered, and I toughened up. My cousin Demetrius came in there, cussed me out, got on me. He said, and I don't wanna say it on camera what he really said. Mom was gonna say he said, Ninja, you better get your grass up. You know better than that. And so I got my grass up and I decided that I'm about to get back to life. And I'm here now. You know what I mean? I'm here to stay. You know, whether it's physically or spiritually. And like whenever I look, I look through my eyes every day. I try, you know, I, I see through my heart. I see through my spirit. You know, like man, if you I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna just give y'all a clear example of what, what it's like for me on a day-to-day -day basis. On a cold day, on a, on a cold, like, day where your inside your house is steamy, the outside is cold, might have just rained, go to your glass window one day, just blow on it. Just blow on it. And that miss, my eyesight is probably a step and a half, a little bit better than that. And I, and, 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 and I go through everyday struggles, like, Stuff is like, I don't, like people will see, people, example, for example, what struggle I go through every day is a person might misunderstand me for being rude. I might see somebody in the store and might not speak and they might think he's rude. And that's because I, I'm legally blind. I go through that struggle. I always gotta make sure I get, like, if, I, if I'm in the store, I don't, I, you know, I have to ask the court, what, do that, what is that? You know, and, and somebody next to me in line or somewhere might think I'm illiterate, but I'm not. I'm very, very educated. I've been to college and everything. But I do have to have help to read. You know, it's an everyday struggle for me. And, you know, I got to have devices to help me see. 
And it's, you know, don't make excuses like when I draw. Let's start off by saying what he does. He's an artist and he's also a uh, music producer. So with that being said, a lot of nights he stays up late doing music sometimes. He's got the music playing loud two or three o'clock in the morning sometimes just trying to mix a song down or trying to make sure he's got everything the way he likes it to sound. And that's one struggle that we go through sometimes with him being a producer. Um, he does good music though. He, all of his music that he does is really good. It's different. It's unique. Um, that's one thing about him that if you know him, he's a very unique um, person. He doesn't do anything uh, normal. Um, he's also an artist, an amazing artist. He's a legally blind artist. Let's start by saying that. Um, he um, paints just about every day. Um, yes, it comes with a mess most of the time because he is legally blind. So sometimes he knocks over paint on the floor. He'll knock his um, bucket over of water that he's got his paint brushes in, just stuff like that. I didn't got used to it by now. And I've been with him for over 12 years now. So I'm pretty used to it by now. It don't really bother me at all. This is like the last thing I pretty much did. I was tired. It's like, this is like, to me, this door, I call it, this is overtime. This is double overtime. I did this in double, I was wore, I was tired, but we won, we got it done. We gotta follow our dreams.